what is going on fantasy people it is your boy john with the catch here to bring you another mock draft let's get going baby we have got a 14 man league ppr scoring format super excited to get this rolling just found out that i will be playing in a 20 man league this year not the first time that I have done this, but I need to seriously start getting on my P's and Q's and some of these higher man leagues. Uh, so I don't know of any platforms that allow you to do a 20 man uh, mock draft, but if you guys do, please, please let me know in the comments down below. While you're down there, go ahead and smash that like button and hit the subscribe button for more future content like this. So I am drafting from the seventh overall selection. So I'm hoping that one of these kind of elite running backs slides out of there. Uh, there's really no question about it, regardless of who is available. I going to be taking a running back, right? Uh, there are probably going to be some very good receivers on the board, uh, some kind of X factor, uh, very valuable players at, at the tight end position as well. But knowing that this is a 14 man league, Things are going to get very thin very, very quickly. So running back is going to be my primary target here. As we've seen, the top two running backs on the uh, board off. Now that you're top three with uh, Derrick Henry still floating around. So you could argue maybe uh, a little bit of a, a slide there. But a lot of people really like Alvin Kamara and what he is going to do, uh, you know, kind of with the departure of Drew Brees. And uh, some people think it's actually going to help his fantasy value, as we do see Derrick Henry off the board as well. So let's see, kind of a pretty typical uh, overall first round here. A little bit of variation between Kamara and Henry, but... I am starting to, uh, you know, obviously my guys that I want, like I said, at the running back position, they're going to be Zeke and Nick Chubb. Uh, then I would probably rank Jonathan Taylor as we see Zeke off the board. So I'm kind of praying that this guy is very high on uh, Jonathan Taylor, and he is not. He is very high on Nick Chubb. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to grab Aaron Jones, and I am happy with that selection. And we will see as or how this first round continues to play out as my next selection is at pick number 22. Got this uh, Alani New Energy Drink, and uh, looks like urine. urine. So uh, kind of interesting as we see uh, Jonathan Taylor off the board with the eighth overall selection. So like I said, I will be going RB heavy. I do recommend in a 14-man or a higher league, uh, definitely go RB heavy with your first two selections. Unless someone uh, you know, of absolute great value just uh, slides to you. Um, as we see, Antonio Gibson uh, with the ninth overall selection. Still have Saquon on the board. A lot of fear around, around Saquon. As Kelsey is picked in there, we see Saquon Barkley going with the 11th overall selection. Now, I, I am personally scared of Saquon Barkley. Let me know in the comments down below uh, how you guys are kind of valuing uh, Saquon Barkley moving into, uh, you know, week one, drawing closer. And, uh, I mean, there's a lot of people out there who do believe that his value is uh, very, very high. And if he slides, you know, into a pick like a pick 11, that he is an amazing value. So let me uh, know down in the comments below what you Think as we see a little bit of a run on receivers here. Uh, George Kittle going with the 14th overall pick uh, shortly after Kelsey went with that 10th overall pick. So Zach having those uh, those back to back picks very high on George Kittle and taking D Hop at the receiver position uh, ahead of Stefan Diggs who just went. Picks are going very very quick. We've seen Austin Eckler go, Joe Mixon, Najee Harris. So I have got to start to think of who I'm going to target. And I can tell you that. Clyde Edwards Alaire is someone that I really like here, but I do also like uh, David Montgomery as well. And honestly, I would be happy with either of them. I think that David Montgomery has a better chance of sliding uh, to my next pick. Let's go ahead and see when that is. Pick 35. So 
a little bit slim pickings in these higher man leagues, but uh, that's what it's all about. I do know a lot of people who primarily play in 14 man leagues, and uh, I think it's uh, you know I think 12 is kind of uh, uh, the number where things are still competitive, uh, but there's you know still. Uh, kind of a difficulty to it right i think in a 14 man league it's definitely con competitive as well but uh there's definitely a little bit of a an edge to a 14 man league so i am going to roll roll with uh clyde edwards Hilaire here uh, and i'm going to hope and pray that david montgomery kind of slides uh you know into uh round three when i pick at 35 over all and if he does not let's go ahead and see who is left at the running back position i do like miles sanders and i do like chris carson uh i would also consider josh jacobs to be of good value there as well but david montgomery is my top guy here uh very unlikely that uh, he's going to slip here but uh, if we see a run on quarterbacks begin, uh, if we see a couple more tight ends go, uh, that you know that could definitely help as well. So let's see. We've seen uh, DK Metcalf, Justin Jefferson selected after Clyde Edwards-Helaire, as well as J.K. Dobbins, and now Chris Godwin of Tampa Bay. And we uh, let's see. So. David Montgomery is projected to be selected and one, two, three, four more picks as we see Scary Terry off the board. So, like I said, I, I think it's very unlikely that I end up with David Montgomery as our guy. Michael picks him up. Uh, let me know in the comments down below, would you rather have David Montgomery as your uh, RB2 or would you rather have Clyde Edwards Alaire? So I think there's a little bit of interesting debate as we see Michael scoop up Patty Mahomes off the board, the first uh, quarterback in this mock draft. And we are now moving into round three. So, I will still double down on my position of going RB heavy. And I will tell you that Miles Sanders and Josh Jacobs, as well as Chris Carson, are uh, my top targets here. I'm also interested in uh, what people think in Chris Carson because uh, he really, you know, outside of any injury, has performed like an elite running back. So, oh man, and there goes Josh Jacobs. So I, I am interested to kind of hear what uh, you guys think about Chris Carson overall. If you think he's. Uh, you know, worthy of being considered an, an RB1. Uh, maybe not your the first RB on your team, but uh, what where's your guys' uh, stock on Chris Carson, who I am going to select with uh, this pick. No knock on Miles Sanders, but, uh, you know, thinking about the offenses that uh, these running backs are going to be in, right? Uh, we've got the Green Bay Packers, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, and the Seattle Seahawks. Three offenses that we know are going to put up big points and are going to hand the ball to their running backs near the goal line as well, even with all the talent on those three teams. Philadelphia, a little bit of a question mark on how that team is going to perform this year. So I am going to pick Carson over Miles Sanders. As we now see Darren Waller off the board as well as Miles Gaskin. So for now, I'm going to take a little bit of a break at the running back position. I don't think there's anyone there that really screams great value. I'll go ahead and mark uh, Mike Davis, but we really do need to go ahead and sure up the receiver position as it is going to begin to thin out pretty quickly. So we do have both the uh, Cowboys kind of top receivers hanging around. Got Robert Woods, Julio Jones, Cooper Cup, DJ Moore, Tyler Lockett, Adam Thielen. Uh, well, CeeDee Lamb is now out. But we do have some pretty good value at the receiver position as well. Uh, if you've been keeping up with our mock drafts that both myself and my co-host Steven have been conducting, then you do know that uh, typically I have been taking a QB relatively early, but in a 14-man league, uh, you know, I will typically let a QB, uh, you know, I'll kind of slide out of this top tier and I'll target more of like a Ryan Tannehill, Tom Brady, Justin Herbert, Aaron Rodgers, kind of that, you know, that tier, uh, 
down there. So as we see Ronald Jones with the 40th overall pick, someone I was thinking would kind of hang around a lot longer, as well as Miles Sanders and Daryl Henderson. And in the top of round four, we have seen Russell Wilson off the board. So a lot of good players getting taken very, very quickly. And that is just how it goes. So also, let me know what you guys think of these first th three selections uh, at the running back position, because I'm pretty happy in a 14-man league uh, with those three guys. So we have seen C.D. Lamb and Amari Cooper also out of the question as we select in five more picks. And there are some good receivers left, but... I am scared. It is going to thin out quickly as Julio is off the board. Lamar Jackson at the quarterback position is off the board. So really, my, my top target here is probably Tyler Lockett. Um, I, I do feel like he is probably the most productive receiver here, although I also really like DJ Moore as we essentially know he is the locked-in number one target in that Carolina Panthers offense. And I do like both these LA Rams receivers as well. So, um, you know, we do see Robert Woods off the board. So I also like Adam Thielen here. So I, I do think we're going to get a receiver of pretty good value here. And let's just go ahead and check uh, at the quarterback position. Kyler Murray is still available. And at the tight end position, uh, we still have uh, some pretty good tight ends. As we've only seen uh, Darren Waller, George Kittle, and Travis Kelsey off the board, but I do think uh, it's pretty important to go ahead and get, we're kind of falling out of this last tier of receivers. And uh, part of me really wants to take uh, like a Kyler Murray here, but I'm going to stick kind of true to uh, this draft process. And uh, we're going to go ahead. I, I do think, I do want to just go ahead and double down on, you know, thinking of the best offenses, the best uh, quarterbacks who are going to be throwing the ball to these receivers. And I'm going to take a Tyler Lockett over a DJ Moore and over an Adam Thielen. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about that pick as well with DJ Moore and Adam Thielen available. And we essentially also have all of the Pittsburgh wide receivers and a very very crowded uh, receiver room uh, available as we see Mike Davis, who I think is a great value in round four off the board, followed by DJ Moore. So at this point, I feel a lot better about the receiver position. So we're going to continue to check the running back position, and we do want to keep a lot of those handcuff situations in mind those running backs who present some pretty good upside in the late rounds. I will also say that I, I'm a firm believer in a late tight end in a 14-man league. Um, as we, you know, just kind of evaluating each position and uh, trying to keep track of who is still available, as we have seen Kyler Murray taken, Kareem Hunt taken, Adam Thielen and Deontay Johnson now in the top of the fifth round, the L.A. Rams defense. I think this this guy, Michael, I think he's pieced together a pretty good team. I want to, oh, not Michael Heavey. His team's pretty receiver heavy. But uh, Patrick Mahomes, Deontay Johnson, CMC, David Montgomery, and L.A. Rams defense. Interesting picks there. I kind of like that team. So uh, let's get back to this. And uh, so... We're still looking very RB heavy, but when you think in a terms of a 14-man league, uh, these are three good RBs to kind of lead your squad. And uh, I I really do like Tyler Lockett this year. And you guys know that I like DK Metcalf a lot. I like him a, a lot more. But you, you are definitely paying a, a pretty penny for uh, my guy DK, DK Metcalf. Excuse me. So as we see a little bit of a run on tight ends here in the top of the fifth, Kenny Galladay off the board as well as Dak Prescott. And I am picking in one selection. So I can tell you uh, I do like uh, the value of Jamar Chase here as uh, Brandon Ayuk was taken uh, right before my selection. But I also like Chase Claypool a lot here. I think he's going to present a lot of good value, uh, a lot of good upside as well, but it is uh, it's a little risky here. 
I'm going to go ahead and take uh, Claypool. But I think there's a lot of good receivers on the board. And, and in terms of what's risky is, uh, you know, I like Jamar Chase uh, a lot. But I just kind of the question mark is we don't know exactly uh, what Cincinnati is going to look like. I think a lot of people have a lot of faith uh, and Joe Burrow's return and what Cincinnati is going to do this year. But I just have a little bit of hesitancy uh, as I mean, I have taken Jamar Chase and mock drafts before. I think that's, you know, to some degree he presents great value and he may be uh, the best value dependent on who is available and who is not. But for now, I'm going to stick with Chase Claypool. I think he's got some great upside. So we have kind of, you know, it's somewhat sacrificed uh, a very strong receiver room for a very heavy RB room. But I'm telling you, in a 14-man league, that is the way to do it as we see Damian Harris off the board, someone who I was keeping my eye on. And I am going to probably target a running back with this next selection. And then from there, solidify the tight end and QB sel- uh, selections. And then uh, really just pick the best players with upside. That's that's really what you have to do uh, in a 14-man league where things are a little bit thinner. Things get pretty slicey and dicey pretty quick. So we're just seeing a little bit of a run at the skill position. Oh, and I, man, Jerry Judy. You guys have heard me talk about him already. Uh, I think he's just creeping up on a lot of people's draft boards. That was someone who I was hoping uh, to actually get with this next selection, or at least maybe in the next round. Uh, And I I really just, more and more mock drafts I'm doing, I'm seeing Jerry Judy. I mean, Cortland Sutton is available right now, uh, and people are are reaching uh, in terms of the rankings for a Jerry Judy, and uh, I think it makes uh, 100% sense. I think he is going to have a fantastic year. As I begin to kind of evaluate some more of these receivers, I think there's a lot of late round value left. So let's go ahead back to the RB position. I'm kind of eyeing James Robinson, uh, even with Travis Etning in that backfield. You guys know that I'm pretty big on James Robinson. Uh, I do think he's going to be heavily utilized in that offense. Um, I mean, the dude was lights out last year. I don't know how uh, he's just so you know completely washed off, off of so many draft boards this year. So as we see Trey Sermon, Logan Thomas, and Odo Beckham off the boards as well. So we've also got the option to go ahead and draft like a Leonard Fournette or a Melvin Gordon. So, uh, and we still have Kenyon Drake hanging around as well. So let's see who was selected. We've got Aaron Rodgers off the board as well as Cortland Sutton. And my turn is creeping up as Chase Edmonds is off the board. I also want to get people's feedback on, uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to pick uh, James Robinson. I I do want to hear what uh, you guys are kind of thinking about Chase Edmonds as well as uh, James Conner, who I'm going to go ahead and add to my board as well. And, uh, you know, out of those two guys, who are you guys targeting? Who do you think presents more value? Uh, You know, all that good stuff. I just want to hear some debate on that Cardinals backfield and kind of get your guys' thoughts moving closer to week one about who you think presents more value uh, in a fantasy sense. So from here, I am going to go ahead and check the tight end position. uh, And I I may just go ahead and sure up the position with this coming selection because I really don't want to have to think about it. Uh, And I'm also, you know, kind of thinking I can snag one of these QBs in this coming round. I think there's a little bit more depth at the tight end position. Uh, As we see Corey Davis off the board, I think that's a great selection. Uh, A little early, I think many would would argue, you know, Uh, someone who's been sliding pretty late, but uh, also someone who I think you can definitely, uh, you know, defend picking in round six as, uh, you know, we don't know exactly how that receiver room is going to work out with the New York Jets, but many believe that Corey Davis is going to have, uh, you know, a lot of opportunities for a lot of targets in that offense this year. Uh, And now we see Leonard Fournette off the board as well. Followed by DJ Chark, who I think is a a really good value in round six. Uh, I think DJ Chark is going to 
going to be a big part of Jacksonville's success offensively this year, followed by Brandon Cooks, who, you know, is essentially the sure number one receiver in Houston, but uh, we have no idea he's going to be throwing the football this year. So a little bit of hesitancy around Brandon Cooks. You know, I think if obviously if we knew uh, who would be playing the quarterback position for the Houston Texans, he'd be a lot higher on draft boards as well. Now we are starting to see a run on quarterbacks and it is going to uh, put me in a trap. Uh, I'm going to have to pick a quarterback here because um, the only guys that I like that are left are Tom Brady and Ryan Tannehill. Um, After that, it's looking like, I mean, I would be skipping out on a QB and I would be uh, going to the stream method and just streaming against bad defenses, which I've done plenty of years. I, you know, used to be my my main uh, strategy, uh, but I, I do want a sure number one quarterback this coming year. As Zach Moss is taken off the board, and we will see who Al selects. Looks like they are a 49ers fan, uh, and let's see, Gus Edwards off the board. So I have uh, my pick of either Tom Brady or. Ryan Tannehill, both of whom I think are going to have fantastic years. So I'm going to take the GOAT, well, other than Peyton, my guy behind me, right? Uh, the GOAT, Tom Brady, old man Tom. I think he is going to have a MVP caliber type year. I think from a fantasy perspective, as we see Ryan Tannehill taken uh, right after my selection of Tom Brady, I think Tom Brady uh, is going to have a fantastic year. If you've listened to any of our mock drafts, uh, if you listen to mine and Stevens, NFC South, uh, the Catch Podcast, uh, you guys know that we think Tom Brady is going to be lights out this year uh, and if you haven't checked out those videos go check out some of our previous mock drafts go listen to our annual the catch podcast and while you're at it smash that like button uh subscribe for more future content like this if you are finding this mock draft helpful educational entertaining or even just humorous to watch me spend my time doing this whatever it may be go hit the subscribe button go hit the like button and leave some comments down below uh you know showing us some 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 support uh you know telling us what could be more helpful in terms of these mock drafts whatever you guys want to do uh, go ahead and comment down below so we have now seen matthew stafford going after ryan Tannehill, who i do think after Tannehill's off the board uh, is probably the next best value at quarterback so i like that selection um like i said uh, i definitely have oh there goes my tight end Oh, I was going to say I had to go out and pick a quarterback, right? Uh, I wasn't going to get someone I was going to be happy with if I didn't. And now we are seeing a run on tight ends uh, with Robert Tanyan and Noah Fant. Off the board, I can tell you that Robert Tanyan was uh, the guy I was hoping to get. And uh, I really, really would like to get Mike Gusecki on this team. But if I don't, I think I've got a uh, move or two up my sleeve, as there are some players available right now that I really freaking like. Like a Kenyon Drake, uh, like a James Conner, and like an Antonio Brown. So, we have now seen Melvin Gordon off uh, the board in round seven, who I think is a fantastic value in round seven. And I'm just going back to see if Michael Thomas got picked or not. I don't see him. Let's see. Oh, Michael Thomas still available. So I can tell you that A.B. and Michael Thomas are two guys I would love to add to this roster. That's looking a little thin at the receiver position as we see uh, the Washington football team. uh, Well, the Washington football defense off the the board and followed by Michael Carter. Great value uh, at the running back position in round eight. So things are getting very thin very quickly as Baker Mayfield is selected with pick 101. Let let us know in the comments down below, like from a fantasy perspective, how do you see Baker performing this year? Because a lot of people have a lot of confidence in that Browns offense just being lights freaking out this year, and this being the year where all the pieces as a team come together. So uh, let me know. Let let me and Steven both know down below how you guys are kind of evaluating uh, Baker from a fantasy perspective as we see David Johnson off the board, someone who I actually think uh, 
it's pretty good value here considering that more than likely he is going to be the RB1 in what is a relatively crowded backfield uh, in that Houston uh, offense, right? Uh, no matter how bad the team is, uh, every team has RB1, uh, receiver one, and a you know starting QB and a, a starting tight end. So uh, even some of these teams like Houston, like a New York, uh, the New York Jets, uh, you know they they do present fantasy value no matter uh, however you want to swing it. So Kenyon Drake is uh, hanging around here, someone who I think is a pretty good value. Uh, Mike Seki is still hanging around. Uh, a lot of good players here, but I am going to do something. Let me know what you guys think about this pick. I'm going to take Antonio Brown because I just feel very thin at the receiver position. Um, and I really, you know, we have four or, well, three, you know, sure starting running backs and kind of a gamble with James Robinson. Um, and I do feel like there is a chance that Mike Gusecki, uh slides to us. And if he does not, then I'm going to start targeting Hunter Henry relatively late. I'm going to go ahead and mark both of those guys to my queue as James Conner as well as Jalen Waddle are off the board. I would not be happy with Gronk as my tight end one, but I don't mind him as like a tight end two. I do think that he is being pretty slept on uh, this year in terms of fantasy as we now see Joe Burrow off the board. So uh, a lot of good players left, right? This is the point, you know, especially in a 14 man league where you're checking who's going as Devin Singletary is off the board. And uh, ooh, I lost my spot. And I, you know, you've got to essentially have a queue going of all the players that you want. Uh, San Francisco defense off the board, and uh, things are going to get thinner and thinner as these 14-man uh, drafts go on. But I think there are a lot of good players left. I was trying to mark Michael Gallup, but I lost my spot that I could I couldn't find his name. So I'm sorry about that, guys. But uh, so let's go ahead and see. We see AJ Dillon off the board. Yeah, the RB position got thin, and it got thin quick, man. I mean, I, I am almost kind of regretting not taking Kenyon Drake because I do think he presents some upside value here, um, as we have also seen a couple other guys like James Conner and Devin Singletary, as well as AJ Dillon off the board. Um, hey, man, this is why we selected those running backs early on. Um, and really, there's uh, you know only guys who kind of present some PPR value uh, left. So Mike Kosecki does not fall to us. We took a gamble. Uh, we knew that it was more than likely not going to happen. But hey, I, I am happy with an additional receiver and Antonio Brown, someone who I think is going to have a fantastic PPR year on this roster as we see Mike freaking Williams off the board, someone who I really wanted in this mock draft to shore up that receiver position. I am going to go ahead and move my face down here uh, just so we can go ahead and see uh, our queue as well as Irv Smith Jr. is off the board. And there are a lot of people that I want to draft right now. Uh, I'm going to take Kenyon Drake because I think he is the only running back left who presents uh, really any type of uh, like upside value to be an RB1 as I scoop my face up again. And at this point, I can tell you that uh, Michael Thomas is looking like my top target. And I think it's possible he slides to us in round 10. Uh, but I also think it's very possible that he does not as we start to see uh, some kickers off the board, uh, which is probably a result of some of these auto draft teams. But through these first uh, couple of rounds, things have stayed very realistic. And uh, like I said, things got slicey and dicey and very thin so far. So let's start to kind of evaluate this player by player, right? Because we've got 12 picks until uh, we make a selection. And I think this is probably the most useful. I'm going to stay away from the draft results for a minute just to go over a lot of these uh, late round values, right? Curtis Samuel is someone who I think is, uh, you know, a great value at this point. 
in the draft. Devontae Smith has uh, the chance to be the number one receiver uh, with the Philadelphia Eagles and someone else who I think is of great value. Naheem Hines, you've heard uh, my co host Steven talk about him a lot. Someone who kind of benefits potentially from some of those injuries that the, uh, the Indianapolis Colts are going through uh, and someone who kind of benefits from the Colts to potentially, uh, you know, having to uh, dump the ball off a lot more and somebody presents good PPR value. So Latavius Murray is someone you could argue is who's going to be a great handcuff value this year. Uh, Marvin Jones could, you know, come out and be a very strong number two receiver for the Jacksonville Jaguars. We've got Alexander Mattison, uh, someone here just kind of crossing your fingers, uh, you know, uh, that Dalvin Cook gets hurt, but uh, still a relatively good uh handcuff situation right uh Devontae parker if he can stay healthy in a very very crowded dolphins offense i think is uh he's a very good receiver and he has uh really helped out a lot of fantasy teams over the last two years or so so adam trotman i mean uh, i'm not going to say he's a great value here but you know my co-host steven is huge on him uh so someone to kind of note as one of steven's sleepers uh but there is definitely i mean i think jd mckissick is a great ppr value at this point in the draft uh, maybe not the best uh, standard league selection but definitely a good ppr value i think rashad penny has a chance to play some this year someone i might target uh in this draft mainly because we have selected Chris Carson. I think as long as Rashad Penny is healthy, you know, any weeks that Chris Carson is injured or unable to play, then we kind of have that backfield on this roster to ourselves. As I'm going to go ahead and add Rashad Bateman to my board. And let's just go ahead and see some of the players who did get selected after this uh, run on kickers and Derek Hall, excuse me, Derek Carr off the board as well as Jamal Williams. So now here in round 10, uh, outside of Matt Ryan, we do see some skill position players start to go. Uh, some of the guys we talked about from that Washington football team offense with J.D. McKissick as well as Curtis Samuel. Uh, we see uh, another kicker off the board, but uh, an interesting selection here that I want to talk about. Gerald Everett has a strong opportunity to be the number one uh, tight end in uh, the Seattle Seahawks offense and Russell Wilson is someone who has shown to you know he loves targeting the tight end in the red zone as well as utilizing the tight end position so I think Gerald Everett has a chance to be a very sneaky uh, fantasy value this coming football year so I am going to go ahead and take Michael Thomas we know that he is not going to be starting for a fair amount of the beginning of the season we don't know exactly what's going on with his injury, but we do know that once he is healthy, he is an absolute PPR machine. I know last year was super shaky, right? Uh, 438 receiving yards and zero touchdowns, injuries, some off the field issues, uh, kind of a crazy year. I had him in a uh, 14 man league actually. And uh, it was a sad year, you know, uh, it was a sad year uh, considering that I chose him in the first round, but uh, I do think that knowing that you will have Michael Thomas for the second half of the year when fantasy playoffs occur, that he is a very sneaky value and someone you can keep on your bench in full faith that he is going to come back and be uh, someone of great value at the receiver position as we see Elijah Moore off the board. Elijah Moore is someone who uh, a lot of people believe will be the number one uh, weapon, number one receiver for that Jets offense. As we now see Devontae Smith off the board, someone who also has somewhat of an opportunity to become the number one receiver in that Philly offense. Uh, so I like that selection, and I think he is a good value uh, in 14-man leagues around round 10. So lots of good players uh, available. I think Kirk Cousins is actually uh, a relatively good good value at the quarterback position a very safe player uh, but I, I do think that he presents some value so uh, I, I feel like I need to pick a tight end I still have not picked a tight end but I think that Hunter Henry is going to uh, continue to fall and I man, New England's got two freaking studs at the tight end position right I mean Johnny Smith and Hunter freaking Henry man uh, 
Johnny Smith two years ago was lights out in the red zone. So and he had a good year uh, last year, still with eight touchdowns. So uh, I may just go ahead and stir up this tight end position, but I really like the value of Michael Gallup here. Uh, someone who seems to be uh, continuously slept on in that Dallas Cowboys receiving room. And uh, he might become kind of my top target as you know, on the overall board, we do see Hunter Henry starting to slide up, which kind of scares me. But uh, if Michael Gallup falls here, I think he's a really good value. What do you guys think about Philip Lindsay? Like, do you think there's any chance he becomes the RB1 uh, for the Houston Texans? Uh, you know, outside of injuries, do you guys think that he could step up uh, and become the RB1 in front of David Johnson? And if so, uh, you know, are you targeting him? Because you can get him. Because you can get him very, very late, excuse me. So, as we see the Denver Broncos off the board, uh, right before that, Latavius Murray, who, like I mentioned, is a great handcuff option this year. We know that Alvin Kamara is going to get, like, hundreds of touches this year, but... He's got to need a break every now and then. And, uh, you know, God forbid any injury to Kamara. Uh, Latavius Murray is always that first guy up, as he had over 600 rushing yards last year and four touchdowns and a receiving touchdown. So I'm going to go ahead and take uh, Michael Gallup here, someone who I've talked about. Uh, I did a video just on Michael Gallup on nothing else, right? I think that uh, the fantasy value is certainly there. Um and if the Cowboys don't re-sign him, you know, he is in a contract year. I'm telling you, he's going to play, uh, you know, like he is uh, in a contract year, like he is trying to play for big-time money. And uh, if they don't re-sign him, I do think he is going to be picked up and be a great addition to another team. So, uh, really, you know, you see uh, kind of a bounce back of my bench players, RB, wide receiver, RB, wide receiver and then i really just there's just no value left at the running back position so we select another uh wide receiver but i can tell you that i will be targeting two tight ends to kind of finish this draft um and if not i will be uh targeting a quarterback you know with uh, one of those tight ends but i do kind of like the idea of adding rashad penny uh to uh, excuse me, I messed up my cue here, uh, to this team. Uh, just because, like I said, uh, having both him and Chris Carson on a team, I think, kind of presents a pretty good value. But I do think that Rashad Penny is someone who could potentially go undrafted and be kind of hanging on the waiver wire and someone you could potentially pick up through the waiver wire, as we see both Trevor Lawrence and Ryan Fitzpatrick off the board as well. And top of round 12, we have Adam Trotman, my co-host Steven's favorite player uh, in the world off the board. But hey, I, I give Steven a lot of crap for this, but Adam Trotman has the potential to uh, be a pretty solid tight end this year. They've got him projected uh, just over 400, 450 receiving yards and just under four touchdowns. Uh, but, you know, depending on who the primary quarterback is, and I think personally it'll be Jameis Winston, uh, you know, you just never know. The chemistry at tight end you know, or between quarterback and tight end can really take off at any time. And uh, at any, you know, number one tight end has the uh, ability to become a, a favor or a favorite in the red zone. So uh, I, I, like I said, I give Steven a lot of crap for it, uh, but I do think that there is definitely some good value there. Um, but I can tell you that Hunter Henry is going to be uh, the guy that I kind of target here. I think uh, between him and Johnny Smith uh, and PPR leagues, I think Hunter Henry presents more value. And then I think in standard leagues, Johnny Smith presents more value as Johnny Smith tends to be uh, you know, someone who is heavily targeted in the red zone. And Hunter Henry, you know, has had a lot of success scoring touchdowns, but he is more of a stretch the field type of guy, someone who can garner a lot of targets. So it looks like we may get lucky and he will fall to us. And he sure did as uh, Tariq Cohen was the running back selected beforehand. So Tariq Cohen didn't really play like at all last year, but um, yeah, he was injured all year. He had 14 14 and a half points in the Ahi last year. So I do think, you know, as long as he's healthy and he can come back, that he does present 
some pretty good PPR value. But if you've been keeping up with this channel, you know that my co-host and myself, Stephen, absolutely freaking love David Montgomery. And uh, I do have full confidence whether Tariq Cohen plays or not that David Montgomery is the guy who will be leading that uh, Chicago Bears backfield as Daniel Jones is off the board of the New York Giants. So like I said, with this final selection, um, kind of targeting Gronk, honestly, uh, especially since Brady is on this team, uh, being able to pair those two would be uh, pretty awesome. Wow, Boston Scott, interesting selection. So I wonder if people are kind of thinking Boston Scott can take that RB1 position in Philly. Uh, I haven't really heard a lot of buzz around that, but it's certainly possible. Uh, I could tell you if I was going to pick anyone, you guys already know that I personally, I am high on Tua. I believe in Tua. Throw all the hate in the comments down below if you want. Uh, but I just have a, a sneaky feeling about Tua this year. And uh, But to add to the QB position, uh, Big Ben uh, has a very, very easy uh, fantasy football schedule facing some uh, our defense is very bad against, uh, you know, uh, teams that throw the ball, excuse me. So uh, I like Ben Roethlisberger's value here. I actually think that in deeper leagues, he is someone that you need to target. I mean, think about all of the different uh, receivers he has to throw to. I mean, I don't think he's going to have like a lights out year or anything like that. But I do think these numbers that... Yahoo has them projected at are, are pretty accurate, like around 3,800 passing yards and around 28 touchdowns. Um, I, I think that's pretty good fantasy value at this point, at least in deeper leagues, like 14-man plus leagues. I think he's someone you should definitely consider, especially if you don't get a QB that uh, you like or if you don't end up with a QB at all. Um, I think he's got some pretty good value. So we'll see if uh, if Gronk falls to us or not here. It looks like he's going to. So I'm just going to pick up big Rob Gronkowski. Um, and yeah, I think these numbers that they haven't projected at, uh, maybe a little high on, at the receiving yard standpoint, especially with guys like AB uh, being able to step up and be a bigger part of the, that offense this year. Uh, and also just the fact that there's a pretty crowded tight end room there. Uh, I would say this number is probably closer to like, between 650 and 700. Uh, but I do think he'll still probably score between six and seven touchdowns next year. So I think he's a pretty good value at this point in the draft. And like I said, uh, being able to pair him with Tom Brady and also having a B on this squad uh, in terms of a PPR league, uh, you know, certain weeks for, you know, example that T uh, Tampa Bay plays against a very, very bad defense. Uh, imagine having those three guys, and your lineup, I think, you know, strategically, there's some pretty good value there overall. So at this point, we're going defense and kicker, right? Uh, so that is one thing with 14-man leagues is you will have less defenses to pick from at the end. So I am not really concerned. Uh, I will just stream a defense all year long. Uh one of my main strategies, you know, for the like ever since I started playing fantasy, and it seems like every single year there's one or two defenses that no one expects to perform well that always end up performing well. Last year, perfect example, LA Rams, uh, as well as the Miami Dolphins. Think about the New England Patriots from two years ago came out and, uh, at a point where uh, historically good. So, uh, you know, I, I just don't personally stress about a defense. Um, and I actually think uh, I, I kind of want to add to it to this team just because uh, Steven gives, keeps giving me so much crap about uh, drafting two on mock drafts and uh, backing two on general. But I think he would be a good uh, quarterback to to have behind someone like Tom Brady, who you know is going to start uh, week in and week out and at least uh, have a pretty high uh, floor every week as well. Oh, and there goes Tua, so so much for that. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and, and we'll pick uh, the top defense and or kicker available. And honestly, uh, 
kickers are a little bit thinner. I mean, especially the uh, in comparison to a lot of the mock drafts we've been doing, obviously because of the numbers. So uh, I may just go ahead and select the kicker who. Uh, oh, we just saw someone else get picked at the kicker position. Oh no, we did it. I'm uh, looking at their ADP versus their fan points. Okay, awesome. So I'm actually going to go with Daniel uh, Carlson here, who has the highest projected fan points, and it looks like the most fan... Well, not... Yeah, let's go with the Chargers, baby. I feel like that's the best offense out of all these teams uh, available, even you know over Arizona. Um, well, Mason Crosby's still on the board. Someone who... Mason Crosby used to be the guy in fantasy, man. That used to be the kicker to have. Uh, so... I'll go ahead and roll with uh, Michael Badgley out of the L.A. Chargers. And then, uh, really, we'll just take uh, whatever defense falls to us. Minnesota's got some pretty good matchups this year. Um, so let's just go ahead. I always feel like Tennessee is uh, like a really good defense, but in reality, uh, they're not. And they have played very, very poorly against Pat uh, in terms of uh, – uh, defending the pass. So uh, we'll go ahead and we'll see uh, what defense lands to us. I, I don't really personally care. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, let's let's go through this team real quick. So this is actually uh, the first 14-man uh, mock draft I've done this year, believe it or not. So please let me know in the comments down below what you think of this overall roster uh and while you're down there go and smash the like button and subscribe for more future content like this but uh that was uh relatively stressful because like i said i have not conducted a 14 man uh draft this year and that's the main reason i hopped on here is because like i said uh i have confirmed that i'm playing in a 20 man league this year and although i have been heavily heavily studying fantasy uh, over the past couple of months to bring uh, this type of content to all of you guys out there. Uh, I am still sweating about that 20-man league. I've done it before, but I'm telling you guys, it is tough, and there is big money involved, and I could not be more excited. But besides the point, let's crack down on this roster, right? So at the quarterback position, we have got Tom Brady, someone who I think is going to have a fantastic year. Someone, I mean, they've got him projected at over... 5,000 passing yards, over 5,200 passing yards, and 38 touchdowns this year. I certainly could see that happening, and I could certainly see him throwing for 40-plus touchdowns this coming football year. So I'm happy with Tom Brady, especially in a deeper league like this. At the receiver position, we have got Tyler Lockett. We have got Chase Claypool. So let's just pause there, right? Those are two guys who uh, may be listed as the number two receivers on their respective teams. Maybe uh, Chase Claypool, you could argue, is the number three receiver there. Um, but they still present very good value, a lot of upside. And uh, we know that both their respective quarterbacks trust them in their offenses. So, I, you know, I'm happy with both those receivers. Uh, but on top of that, you know, in the later rounds we went out and we got Antonio ba Brown as well as Michael Thomas and Michael Gallup. So uh, a lot of, a couple of Michaels on this team, right? Uh, but I think at AB is going to have a very good year from a PPR standpoint. I think we got him at a very good value with the 106th uh, sixth pick in this draft. And I think pairing him with a Tom Brady, similar to how we would like to utilize Gronk here uh, against, uh, you know, bad defenses. It get, kind of doubles down on those points. So, uh, like I said, Michael Thomas, someone who, you know, we know won't be around for the first begin or first half of the season. But second half of the season, he's going to bring a lot of value to this team. And Michael Gallup just won him, you know, you, probably in a 14-man league, you're really only going to end up with one or two of those sleepers. Michael Gallup. For myself personally, I think he is a great uh, sleeper. And let's just pause real quick. And it looks like uh, the defense has got very, very thin. Uh, so I'll go ahead and we'll just draft Cincinnati and kind of throw uh, the one guy left who's drafting. Uh, even though I don't, th don't think he cares. Uh, but uh, just throw him for a, a whim there. Uh, obviously, I wouldn't really pick uh, Cincinnati. But I, I really, you know, like I said, I'll stream whomever uh, coming into this season. So anyways. Uh, at the receiver position, I still feel like, uh, you know, the receiver is not what I'm going to be targeting in a 14-plus league. Uh, so I, I feel pretty happy overall, although I wonder if, you know, without 
drafting Chase Claypool if we could have got one of those tight ends that I feel really good about. But let's move on to the tight end position. And like I said, uh, well, maybe I didn't say this, but let me know what you guys think about Hunter Henry because I think he's a pretty good value. They've got him projected at over 800 receiving yards and just under six touchdowns. So uh, if that were to happen and he's, uh, you know, we got him with 100 uh 62nd pick in this draft that's a very good value in my personal opinion and we kind of shored it up by going out and uh, drafting gronk pretty late with the 175th pick overall like i said we can pair him uh with tom brady and uh double down on those points and hopefully triple down on those points with a b on this roster as well so and then we did get a uh who i think is going to be uh well I'm not trying to make any bold claims on kickers, but uh, Michael Badgley is as good of a kicker as there is. Uh, We did draft a defense, but you guys saw the defense available. Philly was the best defense. Uh, Shout out to uh, my boy, uh, Ben, Fly Eagle Sly. But let's uh, end this with the RBs, right? Because that's what made up uh, the bulk of this team. We went RB heavy. We selected RBs early. Uh, Aaron Jones, uh, someone who I'm personally very high on. Uh, there were some other guys available like a Saquon Barkley and a Jonathan Taylor at that point. I would say that I, you know, I would argue more for Jonathan Taylor, but hey, if Saquon is fully healthy this year, and it looks like he uh, will at least be missing uh, week one, but we don't know for sure, uh, Saquon could be as good as anyone in this league, right? But I'm going to take the safe pick, in my humble opinion, in Aaron Jones, and in a Green Bay offense that I think is going to be very very explosive even with a tough schedule this year uh we know that in the red zone that they will feed aaron jones right which brings me to Clyde edwards hilaire also on a very very explosive offense in the kansas city chiefs someone who uh you know had much higher uh projections last year someone who was really supposed to be uh kind of an x factor to that kansas city chiefs team and someone who in his rookie year was really supposed to take off to deal with some injuries and i do i do think we'll see a nice bounce back a thousand plus yards uh probably you know around 500 receiving yards and yeah i think these are pretty good uh projections around nine total touchdowns between uh rushing and receiving uh And like I said, he's on one of the best offenses in the league. Uh, And so is Chris Carson with the Seattle Seahawks. And uh, I think, you know, as long as these three guys, uh, Aaron Jones, Clyde Erzalaire, and Chris Carson can stay healthy, then we have three very, very good running backs who are going to be a part of three very, very good offenses. So on the bench at the running back position, we do have James Robinson as well as Kenyon Drake, two players who are a little bit of a question mark, a little bit of a gamble, right? But I think they present great upside value. So I'm very happy with those two running backs on my bench as well. So with that being said, please let me know in the comments down below what you thought about this draft. Uh, If it was helpful in any way, entertaining in any way, please go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe for more future content like this. Please let me know what type of drafts you guys want to see. 8-man, 10-man, 12-man, any uh, specific strategies, uh, RB heavy, zero RB, whatever you guys want to see. Let me know in the comments down below. If you guys want to see more joint mock drafts from myself and my co-host Steven, please let us know if you want to see those as well and what you'd like to see us kind of collaborate on in those mock drafts uh, as well. And with that, please also check out our annual The Catch podcast, which we do air once a week. With that being said, this was a blast. I am looking forward to some of these deeper uh, league mock drafts and some of the deeper leagues that I will be participating in this coming year. I'm definitely thinking about live streaming that 20 man mock draft. So look forward to that, guys. I thank you so much for listening and or watching. And remember, guys, you saw it here on the catch.